Guys, guys, you gotta sit, you gotta sit, you gotta sit. Admin things. Oh, mic's not turned on? Oh, yeah, it is turned on. Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, sometimes things go wrong in the course. Sometimes things go wrong in the course. Sometimes there's problems. Sometimes I'm doing something bad. Sometimes your tutor's doing something bad. Sometimes you're angry and upset. And it can often be hard to do anything about it when you're angry and upset. And we certainly don't want anyone to be angry and upset. Uh, and we certainly don't want anyone in the course to um, have anything blocking them. We just want your whole attention and energy and optimism and enthusiasm focused on the problem. So I don't want anyone having problems. So what we do is this thing. We appoint some people called class reps. You guys can pick who they are. Well, in a second, I'm going to ask who would like to be a class rep. The class reps come and see me at the, once a week. We just have a chat after the lecture. And they pass on any sort of feedback or suggestions. So sometimes they'll say, hey, there's some guys, the people at the back say they can never see the lecture slides. Can you make them bigger? OK, so they could just pass that on if you were too shy to say it. Of course, you could always just say that. Or they'll say stuff like, oh, man, you've got to have more showers because the people in the front row are really unhappy. Now, that's nothing you guys can never tell me. I'll know it's coming from you. But, but you could tell it to them, and it would come back anonymously. OK, or you could just say, there's this problem with this. So the idea is I meet the class reps, and they get, help me keep my finger on the pulse of how we're going, problems people are having, all sorts of things like that. So it's really in your interest to pick class reps who you think will represent you well. Uh, which means people you think are chat, uh, uh, approachable, that you can chat about your problems to, and then who will come to me and anonymize it and just give me the feedback. Class reps also often agitate for change. They can be quite good. If there's something going wrong in the course, they'll often just pester me and pester me until I fix it up, which is really good. I really like that. Um, I do, actually, because it's, um, it's in all of our interests to have the course running really smoothly. So uh, just think for a second. Maybe I'll ask an, on Wednesday. No, I'll do it now. What the heck? But, Put your hand up if you're thinking you wouldn't mind being a class rep. One, two, three. Oh, I've got hundreds. Four. We need at least one girl. No, no, that wasn't, no, I know you're not a girl. We need at least one girl so the girls can, what's that? Yeah, oh, I didn't see you. Sorry. Okay. All right, so we've got, uh, so uh, I instantly nominate you as a girl class rep. What's your name? Archie, okay. Can you mail me up? No, on the forum, can you put a forum post just saying your name and contact details that I and everyone else can see? And can you just come and chat to me probably on a Wednesday, after the Wednesday lecture? Just, just hang around for a second. You, do you have a class straight away after that? Um, no, I don't. Just come down and we'll just have a quick chat on Wednesday afternoons. All right, thank you. Now, we need a boy, uh, and we had about seven boys. How are we going to pick? Pick me, pick scissors, paper, rock. <laughs> Just, I want someone to suggest a selection protocol I could follow. What's that? Hair length. <laughs> I like the way you're talking. What's that? <laughs> okay, uh, sh sh quick, quick, I need a selection protocol because we're only going to do this briefly. Yes? Arm wrestle. Do we want someone who's a good arm wrestler or a bad arm wrestler? You don't want someone like really obnoxious because no one will talk to them. But you don't want someone who's a pushover or they won't be able to, oh, it's very difficult. All right, so here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to think of a number. And I want all you guys to, this number stuff again. What is it with computing and numbers? I want you guys to all write down your number. Oh, actually, why don't we just have everyone's number? What's your, what's your name? Liam. Uh, Liam. Stand up for a second, Liam. Let everyone see you. Why would you be a good class rep? Um, no idea. No, he, he has no idea, which, is, which puts him in the same category as lots of people. He looks, he looks nice and shy. Which is good, so you could talk to him and he wouldn't be like rude or make you feel like an idiot if you had a problem. Could be good. Okay, well done, Liam. Was one of you guys? Both? Yes. Alan. Alan. Alan, why would you be a good class rep? Uh, I'm a crazy leftist from ARC. A crazy, a crazy le leftist from ARC? Do you come in twos? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 someone who uh, argue with you when you do it. Someone to argue with me. Okay, so we've got Liam. Uh, Alan, wasn't it? Alan, Alan, who's a uh, very, you reckon, argumentative and determined, who will stand up for people's rights, sort of thing. And Liam, who's got a sympathetic ear, who will listen to your... Yes, anyone else? Yes. What's your name? Yeah, my name's Dane. Dane. Ah, Dane, Vikings. Long hair. Yes, okay, Dane, why would you be a good class rep? Uh, I look like a Viking. Look like a Viking. Got a pretty face. Man, I'm writing that down here. 
and he's a nice guy and he's funny and he, he's, he's prepared to have a go. Well done. Thank you, Dave. Someone else? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Jay. Jay. Uh, yeah, Jay. <laughs> Jay, biking again. Aha, uh -huh, I see. <laughs> yes? What? Jake. Okay. Okay. Yep. Jake. Longish hair. <laughs> and approachable. I'm at university all the time. <laughs> 24-7. So everyone has these different attributes. If only we can combine them like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers into one enormous class rep with all of their powers combined. Yes. Hey, um, I'm Luke. Luke. Um, approachable. He's American. Luke from America? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to draw a... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to... Is that, is that it? Yeah, 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 there we go. Well done. Okay, it's Luke. Are there any more? Yes. Anyone else? We're only 10 people from this side. These guys already have too many Mars bars and too much power already. Yes, one last one. Um, I just thought I should stand up on the bench because I have a longer head than any of the other entrants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Neil. Avi, Amy, Avi. Avi. Oh, you're Avi. Hi, Avi. <laughs> I'll get to know everyone eventually. It takes a while, but I'll start to work out who everyone is. Any more? Yes. Um, basically, everything that everybody else mentioned. Oh! Including Stevie. <laughs> uh, I'm just like a bubbly guy. I like talking. I um, like to socialise. Uh, I think I'm quite approachable. Uh, approachable. Yeah. Bubbly approach. Yep. And? Rob. Rob. This is going to be hard, isn't it? I think any of these guys would be good class. We've got more. Yes. I'm Jeremy. I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like pina colada? <laughs> All right, that's enough. We've got enough. We've got enough nominations. So we've got Jeremy, who likes getting caught in the rain. <laughs> All right, now we're going to do a quick vote. As I go here, I just want you to just shout out, "Yay!" Okay? You can vote as often as you want, and the volume meter will determine it. Yay! 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 Oh, come on. You're not even voting for yourself. Yeah, you, 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 go and vote for Rob. Come on. Yeah. Poor Rob. Yay. Avi. Yeah. Stevie. Yeah. Luke. Yeah. Oh, it's looking good. Liam. Yeah. <laughs> the people that vote for Liam believe in him very strongly. <laughs> Alan. Yeah. Dane. Isn't that the way? Pretty always wins. <laughs> uh, Jake. Yeah. Look, I think it's a tie between uh, Dane and Luke. So we'll have two guy reps, Dane and, Dane and Luke. Okay. Thank you, everyone else who stood. It's a hard thing to do and embarrassing. Everyone was good. I would have liked any of those people as class reps. That was awesomely good. Thank you very much. So um, Luke and Dane, can you just email me, guys, and just send me your... Um, uh, every, no, don't you mind. Put it on the forum so everyone can see. The idea is if you have problems, can those guys all just stand up so we can see everyone? So it's Luke, Dane, and Archie. Archie. took so long, Archie. I got back to you. Archie. Okay, guys, see these guys? You've got to catch them. If you've got any problems, you've got to see them. Can you guys just always make sure you're sort of like approachable and just around a bit early, hang back a bit, and just see if people have any problems? Thank you very much for everyone who stood. That was good. Um, Okay, uh, now, shh, I wanted to tell you about hex, but we'll talk about hexadecimal another time because there's something more important and I don't want to let today's two lectures go past without talking about it, which is, shh, shh, shh. Last week we introduced functions.
Why? Why did we introduce function so early? Given that we're doing very little of C and we're moving through it so slowly, in our very precious we two lectures, why did we use up all that time doing functions? You don't even need functions because anything that can be done with a function, oh, except for recursion, you could just do in the main. So why do we do it so early? Yes. Because we need, you don't need functions for the assignment. No, no, no. You could have done the assignment without them. Yeah. Yeah, they've got lots of neat features. And they've got so many neat features for good design, just so many, that they beat everything else we could have talked about. So we did straight into functions. So let's look at why they're so neat and start looking at some of their um, uh, uh, power. And then we'll start looking at what's going on under the hood with functions. What is so cool about functions? I've, oh, sorry, I've lost the board here. Let me just kill the board lights. I reckon they've got three neat powers. Abstraction, code reuse, and namespace scope. They're their three like superpowers. So let me go through them first of all. Abstraction is very important. In fact, you'll notice your textbook has the word abstraction in the title. And when we were designing these three courses, it was very important to us if we had to say, when we were debating about what content went into which of the first three courses, because there's a sequence of three that you could do, one of the biggest concerns we had to deal with was when to introduce abstraction. Because as far as we're concerned, abstraction is a killer idea. And it was more or less unanimous that it had to be in the first course and it had to be as soon as possible. What is abstraction? Does someone want to suggest in general terms what abstraction might be? Yeah. Abstraction is when you take like, a concept and bring it into a very vague general sort of form. So let's say you have... Let me just repeat what you're saying. You, you take a concept and you put it in a more general form, yeah. which is necessarily vaguer in some way. Less precise, yes? It's less precise. Less specific, perhaps. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It allows you to, it's like what we do with the AP problem. Like we could have written one times two times Yes, that's very nice. OK, I'll repeat that just louder so everyone can hear. Like with the AP problem, when, when we did, we could have written a program that said 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, but we wanted to write a more general program. In a sense, what we're doing there is abstraction. Abstraction is somehow trying to be a bit more general. Yes? Abstraction is the separation of interface from implementation. Uh, yeah, abstraction, let me say what you said and then let me rephrase that. He said, abstraction is the separation of interface from implementation. In everyday speak, abstraction is forgetting stuff. Abstraction is not caring about things. So when I write a triangle on the board, and we're doing a math lesson, and I go three, four, five. Is this really three long? Is this really four long? Let, let's be more brutal. Is this really a line? <laughs> Do these guys actually meet at a point as they're supposed to? Yeah. No. They overshoot the... What? This is not a triangle. This is not a three, four, five. Yet I'll be talking about it in the lecture as though it's a three, four, five triangle. Because when I'm drawing it, all that's important, all that I want you to care about is not the chalk on the board, not the measurements on the board. It's the concept of a three, four, five triangle. And I want, we abstract everything else away. We throw everything else away. If we couldn't throw away all those details, if we were sort of obsessive people and unable to abstract, I'd be drawing this and talking. And all the time, you'd be putting hands up, excuse me, sir, that's not three, four, five. I've just measured it, it's not right, and, and I draw it better. No, sir, I'm saying it's not a straight line. And I'd spend the whole lesson, and I could never actually construct a 3, 4, 5 triangle just because of you pedants in the audience. <laughs> Guys, I mean, all of you. No, OK, so what we do is we throw away, and we just say all that's important is the notion of the side length, and we're just going to write a number. That's abstraction. When we write a program, you could care about all the details about what's going on. But it turns out the number of details in a program is so vast that your head can't fit them all in. And if you had to worry about all the details, you could never understand the problem. The trees would overwhelm you. You'd never get to see the forest. If you had to understand how all the transistors were working to make, add up all the numbers from 1 to n, because all the transistors are working to add up the numbers from 1 to n, but if we had to understand it at that level of detail, every transistor is too much. We couldn't understand the program. It wouldn't make any sense. So we abstract that away. We say, well, let's not worry about the transistors. Let's put them together and make things called gates. And then we say, let's not worry about the gates. Let's put them together and make chips. And then let's not worry about the chip. Let's just talk about the operating codes that it uses. And then let's not worry about the operating codes. Let's have a compiler that abstracts all the way the machine code. And we'll just talk about it as C. 
And then when I, talk to, when I write the program on the board, I even say, let's forget about the C for a while, and I'll just write, though I've rubbed it out, curses, I'll just write what's really going on. And remember I wrote otherwise and all that other stuff? I'd abstract it away from everything. We didn't talk about transistors, we didn't talk about anything. Abstraction is the ability to throw away detail so you can concentrate on what's important. Without it, we can't write programs because we just get overwhelmed. Now let's look at it in practice. Uh, where's my slide here? Abstraction, we've seen it three times. With gates, let me show you with gates. I just tried to pick three different examples. Remember we drew all these transistors and we joined them together and we did all these wires and we had a voltage? Five volts, zero volt. We drew all that stuff and it's complicated. And we drew it so that I think it had two inputs, A and B, and it had an output, X. And we did it so that if A and B were both on, then X was on, and in all other cases they are off. Is that what we did? Does anyone remember? I can't remember if we did and or all. We did or or and? We did both. Oh, okay, that makes this week's tute very easy. So, in computing, we say, let's not worry about all that detail, though it is in the tute, and I do want you to worry about it once, but once you've got it under your belt, we're going to abstract it away, and we're going to say, all we're going to care about is something that I'm going to draw like this. That's called an AND gate. It's got an A coming in and a B coming in. It's got an X coming out. And the information comes out this way, goes in this way. And if A and B are both true, X is true. And if A is true and B is false, X is false. And it's going to have the same properties as this circuit. And the circuit's going to live inside there, but we're not going to care about it. We're just going to look at it as a gate. And if you see anyone designing a chip, they never look at transistors. Well, uh, at first they do, but after a while, all they're drawing is these diagrams with these abstract things on them called gates. And they're not necessarily worried about how the gates are implemented in chips. That's abstraction. This is just shorthand for that. But because we can refer to the shorthand, it gets rid of a lot of the details. So for example, if I wanted to talk about the rules of monopoly, yeah, I can just say the rules of monopoly. And that's shorthand for but if ever I wanted to talk about the rules of monopoly and I wasn't allowed to use abstraction like that, I'd have to say, oh, and by the way, have you read the... Yeah, you see, we can't do it. We, couldn't we can only work by abstraction. So we get a whole chunk of stuff, we give it a name, we refer to it by its name, the name stands for the thing, we don't have to talk about the details of the thing, just the name. If we ever have to investigate the details, we can, we can look the rules up. But usually it's just enough to say, hey, don't forget to put the rules in the box. That's very quick to say that when you're packing up the game instead of, don't forget to put the booklet that says blah, 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 in the box because that would take too long. All right, that's abstraction. You see, it just confuses what's going on. In the middle of doing that long thing, Gwen's going, Dad, what do you want me to do? I'm bored. She loses concentration. Much better if I can just say it really succinctly. Then our brains are operating at full power. So this is shorthand for that. That's abstraction. Another example is, Print a th oh, we have to print hello world. Remember, that's our amusing way of writing hello world in uh, for BMC. We had to write that eight times. I imagine how you did it the first time before you knew about looping was you just wrote it out eight times. And I bet after you'd written it out two or three times, you didn't even think about it as those how many six bytes that you were repeating. I bet you just saw, oh, that chunk, and I'm going to repeat that chunk, and I'm going to repeat that. Did you do that? That's abstraction. You started to think, this chunk prints out 1,000. So I'll repeat this chunk six times. And that's how you understand the program. It's a higher level way of understanding the program. That's abstraction. Functions do this in an obvious way. You can see straight away. Functions take a whole lot of detail. You rip it out of main or wherever it is. You put it down the bottom. You give it a name. And then in main, you can just refer to the name. That's abstraction. Neat thing number one about functions is they give us abstraction. So we can concentrate on high levels of detail, only look at the low levels of detail if we need to. Advantage number two about functions is code reuse. And you've presumably seen this in task one. If you're printing out the numbers from one to 10, say, you've got a, an if statement. You've got to have an if statement. I don't see how you can escape that. So you've got some if statement that says, if the code is one, if the number's one, print out one, if the number's two, print out two, if the number's three, print out three, so on, so on, so on. And then you're in the middle of printing out how many thousands there are, and there are 3,000. There are three of them. You know there are three thousands. You could say, oh, if it's this, print out three. If it's this, print out. But if you've done it right, you'll just call your earlier function that prints out the numbers one, two, and three. Has everyone done that sort of thing? Because it becomes a pain. You write the same thing over and over again. If you keep writing the same stuff over and over again, it's a good clue that you should give it a name, and then you just have to write the name over and over again. And that same thing that it stands for 
is reused over and over again. Yes? Is meant to be this? No, I'm not. I'm in big trouble. Yeah, no. no, I can tell you about the assignment. That's all right. I can tell you. But, uh, because by now, presumably, nearly everyone's finished the assignment. And presumably, you're way past the bit where telling you to represent the numbers 1 to 20 as a literal function is any sort of surprise at all. Yes? You're asking me a distracting question. You've been sent here by my mother. She's always trying to stuff up my lectures. And she just gets people to come in and just ask me distracting questions. So, ha ha, it won't work. I'll pay you twice what she's paying you to not ask me that distracting question. OK? And in fact, I once had a lecturer that used to sit up the back and just shout, rubbish, whenever I said things. Yeah, it was good. It kept me on my toes. Uh, was there something from over here? Yes? Oh, is that a Dorothy Dix? Is that the question I asked you to ask me? Thank you. I did ask two people to ask me questions in the lecture. Can we not do it today because we'll run out of time? But thank you very much for having that question saved up. Thank you. I'll pay you double what I paid you to ask me that question to not ask me that question now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're paid in cash. That's right. It'll be a triangular number. Okay. So, so, but that was a good question, but just ask me offline. Yeah. So, um, because I'm going through this list of three things, and if I get distracted in the middle with all this detail, whoa, we've lost our abstraction. So abstraction is replacing, that's one neat thing about functions, replacing a whole lot of detail with a name, referring to the name. Neat thing number two is if you're going to repeat chunks of detail over and over again, give them a name, and you only have to write that detail once, and then you call the function over and over again. Does that make sense? That's code reuse. That makes your program smaller. Last one. Name, space, and scope. They're just two fancy ways of saying the same thing. A variable inside the function only lives inside the function. I'm sure you've all discovered that now or fooled around with it and worked it out or seen the video coding videos from the, over the break. If I've got an x inside my function, when I leave that function, what happens to the x? It's gone. It's died. If there was an x outside and an x inside, are they the same x? No. They occupy what we call a different namespace. The namespace is, um, uh, uh, well, let's say a different scope. Rather than defining namespace, a sc the scope is how far the variable has an existence. It only lives inside its function. That's one other neat thing about functions, that they have a whole lot of variables in there, but they die when the function leaves. Now, probably the first two things make sense to you as to why they're advantages. You probably think, OK, abstraction's cool. I can concentrate on what's important. OK, code reuse is cool, because I can see for assignments like um, uh, Bjorn, OK, I've seen you. Uh, I can see in assignments like Bjorn, I'd be writing the same thing over and over again, and that'd be very wasteful and error prone. So I can see the advantage of that. But what's the advantage of variable dying when you leave the function? Uh, a rhetorical question, but well done. <laughs> the advantage of the variable dying when you leave the function is, no, you, why don't you say it? You look sad when I said you couldn't say it. Say it. You can reuse a variable name. Can I say that in different words? That's exactly right. If someone else somewhere else uses the same variable name, it's not going to stuff you up. So you're thinking about what potentially you can do, extra power it gives you, whereas I think about it from the reverse. I think, how does this stop disasters from happening? If I'm using all these variable names in my bit of the code, and you're using a whole lot of variable names in your bit of the code, and two of them happen to have the same name, my bit of the code can stuff up your bit of the code, because I'm changing your variables. That's really annoying. Like if I was able to cross-link my assignment file and your assignment file, and every time I edited a bit of mine, it edited a bit of yours, you know, just this one, two or three lines we had in common, that would freak you out. You'd change it back. I'd go, oh, that's wrong. I'd change it. And maybe we wouldn't even notice, you know, if I changed it at the last minute just before you submitted. So we really want everything to be, and I do have the power to do that. <laughs> I would never do that. And what's your name? No, 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 no I'm joking, joking, joking. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Stupid, stupid. Um, so does everyone get that? that if, you, if your names are safe from being used from, by other people, that's an amazing thing because you can use them as much as you want and no one can interfere. So that, reduces the, so that reduces the danger of things going wrong. They're the three amazing things about functions. Now, what I want to do in our remaining whew, 10, slightly more than 10 minutes, is I want us to start writing our own functions in, eight, in uh, 8917. We're going to write... Because C has functions, but 8917 doesn't have functions, which is very annoying. So let's put functions into 8917. <coughs> 8918. 8918. So let's have a look. Oh, 
I'm going to do it on the board, which is, um, which is faster than doing it on the computer. But I hope that people take notes. Please try and get it down and post it up so everyone can see the code we've typed. Let's deal with the features one at a time. I want to write a function that prints out, I'm going to write an 8BMC program that's going to print out the name of the month. Here's version number one. It just, I just wanted to print out the name of the month. How would I do that? I'd say what? 24. What's the name of today, this month? March. So what's the um, ASCII code for M? I'm going to need some ASCII codes quickly. So anyone with a computer, please just start lo looking them up if you've got it. 65? 78. Thank you very much. So tw that's going to print out M. And now I'm going to print out a lowercase a. 65. Thank you. Someone already told us that. Oh, 24. Uh, who cares if it's upper or lowercase? Let's just say 65 because we're in. We've got no. T What's that? Lowercase 97. We could write the letters, but we're not going to because we're writing machine code. Okay, so we've got 2478, 2497, 24. Ah, what's R? Yeah, lowercase. 114. Now, the reason I'm putting all this annoying detail in here, and I'm not just writing the letters, is I want this to be annoying. Because if this is annoying, we're not going to want to do it more than once. So instantly, we're going to think, oh, I wish I could put this in a function. I'm damn sick of trying to look up all these letters. If only I could do it just once and never do it again, that would be convenient. So code reuse, it's going to be convenient to put this in a function. Let's suppose, now we're using 8917. So we've got more than 16 memory addresses. How many have we got? How many memory addresses have we got? Yeah, we go all the way up to 256. We've got heaps of them. So I want to write a program that prints out ma. OK, I can't be rather to write March. I want to print out ma twice. No. Well, maybe I'm going to print it out three times. I can't decide yet. I could write it out here to print it out twice. And think of this as our main function. It starts up the top here. We're starting in main. But actually, I'd rather just have a function that prints out ma. And whenever I want to print out ma, I can do it over and over again. So how could I write uh, this in 8BMC? So something up the top here can somehow print out ma twice without me writing that out twice. I could use a jump. Yeah, I could say, let's say maybe in the middle here, around 100, say, suppose that's address 100. I could say 2478, 2497, 24114. And then my program up here, I want to use that function. So how do I use that? How do I call that function? Jump to 100. So that's great. So straight away, this function up here is going to jump to 100. It's going to print out ma. And then what has to happen at the end? Jump to, to 2. I'm going to return to. So this is going to call the function that I want to return at the next line. So continue processing. So that's 0, 1, 2. Remember? OK, so this is perfect. Now I can, in writing my code up here, because there's many more lines up here. Remember, this is 100. It's a long way down. I can be writing my program in great detail up here. And I want it to print out ma. It just prints out ma. So this is sort of like shorthand for that. But I've got a problem. What if I want to print it twice? <sighs> what would happen if I again said 1300? It'll print out the first one, jump back to here. Print out the second one, jump back to here. Print out the next one, jump back to here. Print out the next one, jump back to here. Print out lots more Mars than I wanted. I've got to change this. So let's just start noticing what's interesting to change. This return address here, we call this a return address. That's got to change. I don't want to write this code out twice. So what I want to do is somehow modify this code. So I'm going to say, OK, let me change the top guy. To call a function is going to be a little bit more work. What am I going to do first? I'm up here. What am I going to do first? I'm going to set the return address, which is what instruction? How can I write to a memory location down here? I have to put it into register 0, then I'll have to write it out or into register 1. All right, let's do that. That's a pain. So I'm going to have to store in register 0. What am I going to have to store? Some number. What's store in register 0? What's the command for that? What's that? 
11, and I'm going to store, I don't know, suppose, 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 yeah, x is stored down here somewhere. This is x, maybe that's what, 90, maybe that's 90, uh, 80, maybe we, this is 80, so there's lots of lines missing between here and here. So I've got an address called 80, and I'm going to load 80 into register 1. And then I'm going to write it out. Where do I want to write it to? 11 is right. Nine is seven. Thank you. Load that into register 1. And then I want to write it out to the return address. Uh, that's 107. Thank you very much. And then what do I want to do? After I've updated this with the correct number, what do I want to do now? Jump to the beginning location, which is 1300. Whew. It took six bytes to do it, but let's see if it'll work. Oh, and what's my, where, do, where, do I, where do I want it to return to? I want it to return to address location six, so I better put a six in here. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to load this value, which is six, into register one, zero. It's going to then write it out into location 107, which means it's going to write this number here, six in there. It's then going to jump to the beginning, which is here. It's going to print out M, A, R, and then it's going to jump to 6, return, and it's going to keep going. So it took me uh, 6 bytes, but I've got a reasonable function call here. Can everyone see that? And now if I wanted to do it again, I want to reuse this code again. How, how can I print MAR a second time? I have to, yeah, I'm going to have to repeat this. So I'm going to have to go 981, um, and that'll be Y, say. I'm going to store something in Y. Uh, and then it's going to be 11107. 107, and then it's going to be what? 13,100. And what's the return address? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is where I want it to return to. Makes sense. Six more. So now here's my... Oh, that's not 107. Is that right? Yeah, everything's looking cool now. Okay, so let's run the program now. Starts off with that being a zero. Read 80, which is a 6, into register 0. So register 0 now contains 6. Write that out to 107. That now contains 6. Jump to 100, OK? So this is jump to 100. So we go M, A, R, then return to 6, which is here. Now what that does is that says, oh, up here. Thank you very much. This is load something from 81, which contains a 12, load it into register 0. So this now contains 12. Then write out whatever's in register 0 to 107. So this now contains 12. Then jump to 100, and it does. M, A, R, return to 12, which is here. And the program's ready to keep going. So does everyone see? We've got a six byte function call. Questions? Yes? Oh, no, don't worry about scope. Just questions about what we've done. Yep. Uh, that's a good point, but let's not worry about it now. OK. Um, you see the value 6 and 12? Yes. In an old program, would it actually go to remove those? Sorry, I misunderstood what you are about to ask. I thought you were going to ask what I'm just about to do next. Um, in a normal program, how would these guys be assigned into memory? Let's wait and see. We'll see pretty soon how it's going to be done in a normal program. Let's just suppose magically now we can assign any... Woo! We can assign anything anywhere we want. Yeah, so that's a good question. Yeah. Um, if we wanted to print that out 20 times, then like instead of writing it all out 20 times, could you just somehow make like a loop? Like oh, yeah, we could loop. We could loop. Yeah, another way of getting code reuse is to loop over the code. But I want to do it with a function. So, yeah, we could loop and not have a function, but I'm just showing you how we could have a function that has code reuse. Oh, no, I meant to say, it's still using the function. We have a loop as the main program. Oh, a loop to call it. Um, in this case, we could because the return address is increasing by 6 each time, so it's OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the return address wasn't increasing by 6 each time, it would be a bit more work. But yeah, of course you can. Yeah, good point. Whereas the return address wouldn't need to change because the function call would be at the same spot if it's looping over the same code. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. Good, yeah, yeah, good point. If we call the function over again in the same spot of code, then it could just return to that inside the loop. We haven't done loops yet, so this is all abstract. Yes? This is exactly what you're going to say. And you had a question before. Oh, can we get, get back to that? Yeah. Because I'm just keen to knock this over. And we have four minutes left. Shh. 
If everyone has got this, no, well, let me just check. Everyone's got it. Does everyone understand this function call? Right, now, because we have a problem with this. It's looking okay. And if I wanted to print out instead of Mar, I wanted to print March, that'd be easy. You see, I just have to change this one piece of code and all the function calls would still work and now March would be printed out twice. But suppose I wanted to print out the actual date. So I wanted to print out March 31st maybe, or sometimes I might want to print out March 16th, or sometimes I might want to print out March the 1st. How would I write a function that can take an input parameter? We've got a function here that's just, it has no, it's just a side effect only function, only prints. It doesn't take any information in. What if I wanted it to take a number in and it was going to print out like 6 ma, 7 ma? How would it do that? Store it. Where would be a good place to store it? You know, I reckon a good place to store it at the moment with what we're doing would be, let me just delete the beginning of the program. We could say up here, 24, I mean, we could say 8, and then 24, what, a space is 32? Now, can you see this program, which now starts at, 94 or 96 prints that number, prints a space, and then prints ma. So how would we call that? What would the calling code look like? It'll be 980. Let's get the let's compute the return address first. And then it'll be 11 107 to write it into there. And then what are we going to have to do now before we do anything else? We're going to have to read in the date. Suppose the date, the number it happens to be stored in register 1. What would I do now? 12. I'm going to write out the value of register 1 and I want to write it in this location, which is 97. And then I'm going to call it, which is what? 1396. Does that make sense to everyone? Look at how the calling thing goes now. It reads in whatever's at 80, and 80 down here happened to store 6. Oh, well, what's it going to store now? 8. It reads in an 8 into R0. It writes the 8 into 107. It writes out the value of register 1, which contains, let's say, the number, the date. So it's the, what's the date? 31st. All right, so suppose register 1 contains 31. It writes that into address 97, which is here. It then jumps to the beginning of the instruction. And now it prints out, print out the number 31, print out a space, print out ma. So you see that'll print out 31 ma? Is everyone cool with that? Okay. So what I want you to think about now is we've seen a function where we can pass stuff in Challenge for you, and I'll continue with this on Thursday, is I want a function that returns a value. And, I want, and maybe we have to improve this a little bit too. Maybe it's not looking quite so good. So think about this. See if there's any problems with this. Fool around with this and try and get this working yourself. So certainly, going back to the cool skate, if you want to be a cool skateboarder and appear on YouTube, what you've got to do is go home tonight and write a program to print out 31 ma over and over again. Okay. All right. See you guys. See you on Thursday. Wednesday.